Catalanado Stadium sits quietly now. Like a century, it guards its past with pride, a silent reminder of the times when tigers roam freely there. Salem, uh, you better be buckled up when you got up there. Uh, they, they had teams ready. The, the local community supported them well. Uh, they were always one of the tougher teams to play in the league. Yeah, I thought the, the, the rest of the student body, just like here, on a smaller, only on a smaller scale, I thought they all got into it pretty well. You know, there was a, a lot of interest in football. Salem College fielded their first football team in 1916, but true success didn't come until the late 60s when the Tigers began a run of 11 straight winning seasons, thanks to talents like Jack Delaplane. I remember Jimmy Chacona saying, uh, Mr. Passed Along, I know a running back that's better than I was. So the next day I got in the car and <laughs> drove to Pennsylvania, and we were fortunate to recruit Jack Delaplane. Delaplane was tough to tackle. I remember trying to hit him on a punt team one time, and it was very unsuccessful. Uh, he made a move and headed down the sideline. He came to campus at about 160 some pounds and departed over a little over 200 pounds four years later. Broke all the conference rushing records. In the 80s another renaissance took place under a young coach named Terry Bowden and running his offense was Clarksburg native Jimbo Fisher. He played uh, on a level above anybody else's. I mean, intensity level is just unreal. Well, he just had a knack for winning and, uh, you know, making uh, something small turn into a big play. With Fisher, Orson Mobley, and Jeff Shaw leading the way, Salem began to climb in the standings. But to claim the top spot, they had to battle their arch rivals from Fairmont State. It was always a heated deal because he had a lot of local people split in half. And, and both teams were always really good. Both teams were always really at the top of the league somewhere. That was our arch rivals. It was the grudge match. We looked forward to it every year. On November 9th, 1985, these two teams met at Duval Rozier Field with the conference title on the line. The intensity level was just up and beyond any other game we played the re you know, throughout that year. Uh, at that time, Fairmont had the number one defense in the nation going into the game, and Salem had the number one offense in the nation going into the game. Salem's 43-24 victory gave them back-to-back -back conference titles, and it seemed that the Tigers' roar had been restored for good. 